Andy, did you hear that? Come on, will you? Did I hear what? That whistle. That's the Rinso White whistle. And Rinso means us. That's right. Rinso gets clothes Rinso White. And Rinso presents the Amos and Andy Show with Shorty the Barber, Gabby the Lawyer, the Mystic Knights of the Sea Quartet, and Hattie McDaniel. <laughs> Rinso whitewash. With ease. A Rinso bright wash. With safety. Rinso makes a difference three ways. One, those soapy rich suds make wash day easier. Two, they keep your finest washable colors safe. Three, they give you results that can't be beat. No wonder Rinso is the only soap recommended by the makers of 33 leading washers, including your precious Bendix home laundry that automatically washes, rinses, and damp dries your clothes in one continuous operation. Remember, washer manufacturers are still making essential war materials, so be sure your Bendix home laundry gets the best of care. And next wash day, team Rinso with your Bendix for a wash that's... Rinso White. Rinso White. Happy little wash day song. And now our stars, Amos and Andy. Years ago, when Andy Brown thought in terms of having a date with a girl, you'd hear him on the telephone. And this is about the way it would sound. Oh, look, Margie, I admit I can't take you out big, but we could spend a nice evening walking through the park. Look, I don't go out with any bums like you. Goodbye. And then... came the war. <laughs> After a few years, all the young, single, attractive men were in service. All that was left were fellows like Andy Brown. So today, today we hear him on the phone with conditions slightly changed. Uh, excuse me, fellas. Hello? Oh, hello, Andy. This is Margie. I was wondering if you'd like to go out with me tonight. Well, I wouldn't mind going dancing on the Harlem Plaza roof. Only trouble is, it's pretty expensive. Oh, well... How about going Dutch Treat? Dutch Treat? Oh, well, I've done that before with gals, but there's something wrong with that. They ain't right. You show you can't pay the whole thing, huh? <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry, Andy, but I just haven't got the money. You ain't, huh? Mm-mm. Well, why don't you call me up someday next week? Say on your payday. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, Andy, what is this business of gals calling you up to take them out? This is the fourth call you done had in the last hour. Oh, this goes on all day long. It's the man shortage. Hey, wait a minute, you boys. Uh, give me a chance to let this sink in a second here. Gals calling men up for dates, willing to pay expenses. Mm. Say, fellas, this give me a great idea. You do? Yeah, look here. We could round up some old single men and open up an escort service. Say, Kingfish, you either got an idea there renting out fellas to these women that is dying for dates. Yeah, a lending library of men. <laughs> yeah, Andy, we is done hit the jackpot. Now, the first thing to do is to slap an ad right in the Harlem News. Ad, huh? Oh, yeah, say in the ad there, the romance escort service. Leaders, why let the shortage of men keep you home night when you can rent a man? Low rates. Small deposit required in case you don't bring him back. <laughs> Great, Kingfish, great. You go put that ad in the paper, and I'll go and round up some single men. Yeah, pull up a chair to the desk here, Shorty. Now, uh, here's the deal. We get 50 cents an hour for renting you out as one of our escorts, and in return, you give us a date with a gal, and she pays the expenses besides. Oh, that, that, that's wonderful. That, that makes me a gigolo. Just, just, just a gigolo everywhere I go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, well, now, I'm glad you see it our way. Now, Shorty, now, if uh, you're going to be escort, the next step is to learn you a little about the subject of women. Yeah, Shorty, you got to know about women. Oh, I, I, know, I know women already. Oh, you do? Yeah, they're the ones with the dresses on. <laughs> On second thought, Andy, I think Shorty's going to have to be marked down to our 30 cents hour class. The only one thing about me being one of these escorts, you don't know who you're going out with, and I don't like blind dates. Not after the last blind date I had. 
But uh, you draw the clinker, huh? Oh, yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I was expecting a pretty gal, and when I see that she was such a mess, I, I, I just broke down and cried. Hmm, that's too bad. Bald like a baby, huh? Oh, she was even bolder than that. <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you, these blind dates... Uh, are... Hey, hey, Ander, look through the window. This woman coming toward the office here. I'll bet this is our first client. Yeah, well, that's Hattie McDaniel. She used to be my landlady. She throwed me out two weeks ago. I'll go in the back room with Shorty, and you handle the whole thing. Come on, Shorty. Yeah, I, I, I'll uh, sell Shorty uh, as, the, as the escort. He's the only one we got. Yeah, sell her Shorty. Uh, come in, madam. Come in. Uh, what can I do for you? I done read your ad in the paper. My name is Hattie McDaniel, and I want some escort. Uh, yes, madam. I've got two tickets to a concert, and I need some masculine accompaniment. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, now, uh, what type of man did you have in mind to rent? Well, I want a big one. Something around six feet four would be my style. Six feet four, huh? Uh, you wouldn't want one around four foot six, would you? <laughs> no, I want a big man. I want the kind of man that some days he kisses me. I feel like the air is coming out of me. Like I'm going empty inside. And there's a buzzing in my ear. You don't want a man. You want a vacuum cleaner, don't you? <laughs> Never mind the wash pack. Just cut out one of your samples and let me look him over. A sample, huh? Okay. Oh, Tyrone. Oh, Tyrone, come out here. Uh, did, 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 you, did you want to see me? What is that? <laughs> You mean this is supposed to be my escort? This scrawny, undersized runt? That's him, yeah. I should have remembered this is Meatless Friday, ain't it? Mm. <laughs> hey, uh, Miss McDaniel, uh, this is Tyrone, otherwise known as Shorty. Uh, Shorty, this is Hattie McDaniel. How would you like to go out with her, Shorty? Oh, I- I'd love to. I- I've always wanted something big in my life, and I'll never top this. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm going to be frank. I wouldn't have the nerve to walk into a concert with this shrimp. Oh, now listen, Mr. McDaniel. Shorty might be small, but you can't be choosy. After all, there's a shortage of men. It ain't the shortage of men that worries me about shorty. It's the shortage of shorty. <laughs> well, now, now, wait a minute. Won't you reconsider, Miss McDaniel? I still ain't taking no half pint. Well, if that's how you feel, then goodbye, you lovely big thing. <laughs> Now, uh, Mrs. McDaniel, uh, since you insist on having a big man, there's only one fella around here that'll fit that description. Who's that? Andy Brown. What? I should have hired that no-good bum to be my escort. Why, he still owes me four weeks back rent. I admit I need an escort, and he's big enough, all right, but I got my pride, I got my feelings, and I got my self-respect. Then I didn't deserve huh? No, I also got my tickets to the concert. I'll take him. <laughs> Now let's listen to the Mystic Knights of the Sea Quartet singing Little David, Play on Your Harp. Little David, play on your harp, pal. Little how, little David, play on your harp, pal. Play on your harp, pal. Little how, little David, play on your harp, pal. Little David was a shepherd boy. Shout for joy. David, play, play on your harp, hallelujah, hallelujah. Play on your harp, hallelujah, hallelujah. Play on your harp, hallelujah. Play on your harp, hallelujah. I don't told you once. I don't told you twice. That sinner. Take my advice, little David. Play, play on your harp, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Play on your harp, 
That's the honest truth. I done rented myself out to Hattie McDaniel the last four nights. I is in love with her, and I'm going to marry her. Yeah, but Andy, I have seen that Hattie McDaniel, and she don't look like the kind of a gal that you usually falls for. I think you must be marrying her for another reason. Listen, Amos, I is marrying Hattie for her own sweet self. The fact that her own sweet self happened to be the rich landlady of a boarding house, and I wouldn't have to work and could take it easy if I was married to her, ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> I think. <laughs> and uh, you can't marry Hattie just because she is the wait, one Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here comes the kingfish. Wait a minute. Hold well, hello there, boys. What's all the cussing going on here? Kingfish, you is just in time to congratulate me on my coming marriage to Hattie McDaniel. What? You mean to tell me that you was going to get hitched up to that old pickle puss? <laughs> kingfish, you is speaking of the old pickle puss I love. <laughs> Well, I guess this means the end of the escort service, fella. That's right. Yeah, you won't be single no more. And you was absolutely crazy to marry that woman. I can't let you do it. But I wants to marry her, Kingfish. Yeah, but it means giving up a going business. I won't have no part of this crazy marriage. Not a single thing to do with it. But she's got money. And to shake hands with your best man. <laughs> well, there it is. I knowed when he had money that it moved right in. Okay, boys, battle it out. I was leaving. So long, fella. Amos is right, Kingfish, and this is one thing that you ain't horning in on. Now, listen, Andrew, as a 50% partner in the escort service, I is entitled to one half of everything that come in. And Hattie McDaniel come in. Mm. Now, as far as I is concerned, your marriage to her is nothing but a subsidiary of the escort service. Me and Hattie is a subsidiary? What is that? Why, every big corporation has got subsidiaries. Yeah. And very often after a while, the subsidiaries have subsidiaries of their own. <laughs> Listen, Kingfish, you mean after me and Hattie is married a while, we'll liable to hear the pitter patter of little subsidiaries run around the house? All I know is, Andy, that I is a partner. Now, wait a minute, Kingfish. It so happened that I need some help if I want Hattie to marry me. If you can give me the help, I'll cut you in financial on the marriage. It's a deal, and uh, what help you need? Well, Hattie won't marry me unless I slips a diamond engagement ring on her finger first. Hmm. And I is too broke to buy one. But she has got to have one. Mm, now, there is a problem there. Now, uh, can't let this marriage fall through here. Uh, Andy, I got it, I got it. Look yeah, at it. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you, son. What? I'll get my wife's engagement ring and loan it to you. Now, she never wears it except when she steps out at night. Now, the rest of the time, she keeps it in a drawer. Yeah, but what happens if I gives the ring to Hattie and then Sapphire misses it? Yeah, well, she won't get a chance. Now, Hattie is a big woman, so when you try to put the ring on her finger, it's going to be too small for her. Mm -hmm. So you takes it back and you tell her that you're going to have it made bigger at the jeweler and it's going to take about eight weeks, you see. Oh, yeah. And about that time, you'll be married and that'll be that. Oh, kingfish. <laughs> Boy, you got something there. That's a swell idea. Mm -hmm. Let's go get the ring. And I want you to know that I is now happy to cut you in on my marriage. Yes, yeah, Andy, uh, I just know that the three of us is going to make a lovely couple. Well, Hattie, dear, just like I told you last night, I is crazy about you, and I want to marry you. Andy, is you sure you loves me? Oh, show, sure, honey, show. Sure. Here, sit down on the sofa here beside me and let me tell you how sweet and lovely and beautiful and gorgeous you is. <laughs> oh, Andy, how you said them things. <laughs> well, don't you want the truth? Never mind the truth. I like this stuff better. <laughs> Well, uh, 
Then how about giving me a little kiss? Listen, I don't kiss no man unless I was engaged to him. And like I told you last night, I ain't engaged unless I get the ring. Yeah, well, Hattie, darling, it so happened that I come over here today just to give you this ring. Sorry it's too small. I ain't tried it on yet. Ah, oh. oh, it's beautiful. Why, this ring fits perfectly. Well, I'll just take it back to the jeweler and I... Uh, uh, what was that you said? <laughs> This is the most gorgeous ring I've done ever seen. Look at that diamond. And it's surprising that you know enough to get such a small ring, because even though I is plump, I got very small fingers. Yeah, well, uh, uh, look, I was just noticing here that the ring could stand a little shining up. Uh, let me take it back and get it polished. Take your hand off that ring. <laughs> Andy, the way this ring fits me. It's like it was made for me. Like it was meant to be on my finger forever. Forever, darling, till death do us part. Mm, yeah, and it can't come too soon for me. <laughs> Don't forget to stay tuned to the very end of this program to hear a personal message from Amos and Andy. Now, some people can tell it's summer by the blue skies and the flowers and the birds, but for you ladies, the first signs of summer are piled right up there in your laundry hamper. Shirts and overalls that have taken quite a beating in the garden. Rompers and children's play clothes that show the signs of marble playing and mud pies. Well, you know the rest. But fortunately for a great many of you, you also know the answer to getting those clothes sparkling clean without working yourself to a frazzle. It's Rinso. Yes, soapy rich Rinso, the soap that gets out stubborn dirt fast. Rinso soaks the dirt out of your clothes in as little as ten minutes. Just a rub here and there where the dirt's extra bad and rinse. Easy? Yes, ma'am. And the results are always top notch. Why don't you get a big box of Rinso from your grocer tomorrow? Make next wash day a Rinso wash day. And sing while you wash. Rinso white for a wash that's white as it can be. Rinso white. B R I G H T. Yes, Rinso keeps your colors bright. Gets out more dirt for a wash so white. Here's great advice you can't go wrong. Rinso white. Rinso white. Happy little wash day song. Get Rinso tomorrow. <laughs> Gabby, I'm glad you come to the office here, because me and the kingfish is in a mess of trouble. Well, as a lawyer, I ought to be able to help you. Now, what's your problem, Andy? What's your problem? Well, the whole thing started when the kingfish gave me an engagement ring. He did? Well, how sweet of him. I hope you two will be very happy. Yes, indeed. I do. <laughs> oh, listen, Gabby, this is serious. What I mean is that the kingfish done loaned me Sapphire's engagement ring. I needed it for the time being so I could become engaged to Hattie McDaniel. Hattie McDaniel? That fat gal? She ain't so fat, Gabby. She just pleasingly plump. Pleasingly plump? Yeah. <laughs> What's she trying to do? Please everybody? <laughs> Look, Gabby, forget about Hattie and let's get back to the ring. Now, the thing is, I was just going to use Sapphire's ring to show Hattie that I had serious intentions. Oh, I see. Yeah, but I didn't count on a ring fitting Hattie, and now I can't get it back from her. What is me and the kingfish going to do? Well, the first thing, now, let's set up the problem. Let's set up the problem. If them two gals ever meet and find out what happened, they're going to masquerade both of you. That's your problem. Now, the next thing to do is find a way out. The, oh, yes, got to find a solution. The solution, yes, indeed. Uh, well, Gabby, what would be a good solution for us? A good solution for you? Yeah. Well, that stuff Himmler took is quick. <laughs> Of course, there is another method. Yeah, well, I already like that a lot better. Well, the thing to do is keep the girls apart. Keep them apart so they can't find out what happened. And the other thing is to keep Sapphire from discovering the ring is missing. Yeah. And furthermore, if you uh, ever... Wait, if... Andy, wait a minute. I better found you here. The roof done fell in on us. What happened, Kingfish? What's the matter? We really in the soup, Andy. Sapphire has done invited Hattie to bring you over tonight to celebrate the engagement. Sapphire show to see the ring. Oh, Boy, there's only one thing to do. You gotta keep Hattie from showing it. But if that don't work and Hattie finds out she can't keep the ring, then you better have another little trinket ready to give her right away to replace the loss. Yes, indeed. It. Oh, you think I ought to get a trinket just in case, huh? Yes, indeed, because if you don't and Hattie finds out that you ain't got no ring or nothing, you're gonna be affected by the State Auto Club. Yes, indeed, the State Auto Club. The State Auto Club? How you figure that? Well, Hattie gonna be in such a furious state on account of she ain't got what she ought to, she gonna hit you over the head with a club. That's the State Auto Club five headed. <laughs> Yeah.
You know, the only thing that bothers me, Kingfish, is where is I going to get any money to buy a spare trinket? Yeah, I know we're in trouble. I told you that when I walked in here. Yeah, I know we're in trouble. I'm shaking like a leaf. I know it. If I just had some money, I... Uh, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know what I'm going to yeah, do. Yeah, well, think of something, son, because we're in it now and we got to get out of it. Now, think hard. Now, what are we going to do? I got it. What? Henry Van Porter owes me some money. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I got an IOU of his that's due today. Yes, yeah, so I'm going over to his house and make him pay me that money. Yeah, and I know his home now. I, I sure if you go over there now, you'll find him there. Yeah, well, I is in a jam. You know that, and he has got to help me out. Then I'll come over to your place later with Hattie. <laughs> Oh, oh uh, well, that, there's the door, Hattie. Uh, there's the Kingfish apartment right there. Well, stop shaking and ring the bell. Yeah, but yeah, well, yeah, well, Hattie, like I was telling you before, honey, it, it ain't lady like the flash jewelry, so instead of you showing the ring to Sapphire, why don't you just keep your glove on and kind of let her admire the bulge? Oh, me. Well, there you two is. Congratulations to both yeah, of you. Yeah, the two lovebirds. Come in, come in. Sapphire, it was sweet of you to have this engagement party for me and Andy. Oh, not at all, Hattie. I'm happy to do it. The other guests will be here any minute. Let me get my gloves off here. Oh, uh, don't take your gloves off, honey. Don't take them off. It's mighty chilly in here. You're li- your hand's liable to catch a death of cold. Yeah, I might get pneumonias of the fingers oh, there. Yeah. Don't take them off. <laughs> They're so silly. Hattie, let me take your coat and gloves. Oh, listen, Kingfish, we got to keep Hattie from showing Sapphire that ring. Yeah, we got to keep calm and think of something. Yeah. In the meantime, stop smoking that cigar and make you look nervous. Make me look nervous? Why? You got the lid end in your mouth. Oh. <laughs> well, Say, uh... Andy, tell me this. Uh, by any chance, did you get the money from Henry? No, I didn't, but uh, here's what happened. I, uh, uh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, here it is, here it is. Well, Hattie, it's certainly nice to have you here with us tonight. Sit down. Uh, well, uh, it's getting late now. I guess we better be running along. Uh, yeah, yeah. Time for me to get to bed myself. It's almost 7.30. Yeah. George, will you please stop acting so crazy? I want to see Hattie's ring. Uh, Hattie, honey, uh, I, I, I just decided I want to hold your hand, honey. Funny how this affection just sweeps up on you all of a sudden. Andy, sweetheart, honey, is you going to let go of my hand? Or is I going to have to pop you? Mm. <laughs> Well, now, listen, honey. Here's Sapphire. Here's the ring. Oh. What did you think of it? Oh, Hattie is beautiful. You know, it looks just like my... my... That is my ring. How did you get my ring? Andrew H. Brown? George Kingfish Stevens. And it is the fatal roll call. Yeah. <laughs> George, you come back in the kitchen. You got some splendid... Oh, yes, dear. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Come in. And Andy Brown... You better start talking to her and make it good. Uh, yeah, well, 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 honey, uh, the only reason I done it was because I loved you so much. You see, when you insisted on having a big diamond engagement ring, I just didn't have the money to get you one, and I didn't want to take the chance of losing you. Well, I guess I might have been a little too demanding about the thing. At the same time, a woman has to have some little token of affection from the man who loves her, something she can call her own. Yeah, I know that, honey, and that's what I got right here. This little gold bracelet. It ain't much, but... In giving you this, my heart goes with it. And it's something you can call your very own. Oh, Andy, it's beautiful. Oh, wait a minute. There's somebody at the front door. Come in. Well, hello, folks. Look who's here. Oh, come in, Henry. How is you, Mrs. Van Porter? Hello, Andy. Hattie, congratulations. Oh, thank you, Clara. Clara, I want you to see what Andy just gave me. I'd love to. What is it? A beautiful bracelet. Just look at it. Why, that is beautiful. It's the... Why, Hattie McDaniels, what are you doing with my bracelet? Well, folks, as you may know, this is the last broadcast of the season for Amos and Andy. And tomorrow, Amos and Andy leave for overseas to entertain the boys who are in Allied hospitals. But now they would like to have a word with you. Ladies and gentlemen, this completes our 21st year on the air. In all this time, there is one thing that Andy and I have been very much aware of, and we have told you this many times before, and that is that it's you people out there in the listening audience who have made our radio career possible, and we are deeply grateful. That's right, folks. And we certainly value your friendship and loyalty over all these years more than any words of ours can ever tell. In representing Rinso on the air, Andy and I want you to know that we personally feel Rinso is the greatest product of its type on the market today. 
It's a product which we know is worthy of all the claims that have been made for it. And if you haven't tried it, folks, you are really missing something mighty good. And to those of you who are steady users, we know from your letters that you are happy with the results. And now a word about the summer show. While we're gone for the summer, the Rinso people are going to put on a grand show for you starting next week at the same hour. The program will star Dunninger, that fabulous gentleman who reads people's minds and even reads letters without opening them. And you can take our word for it that he's really great. Amos and I have seen many entertainers in our years in show business, and we can truthfully say that none of them has ever so completely mystified us as Dunninger. And Dunninger's new program has a swell orchestra, a singer, and many surprises. Hollow Wilcox here can tell you more about Dunninger. Go ahead, Hollow. Well, Dunninger, of course, is a master mentalist, possessed of the uncanny power of telling you your innermost thoughts. Each week, Dunninger will read a letter he has never seen and try to perform the feat that's asked for in that letter. Now, you write those letters. And start writing right now, because there's a $100 award for the letter read and an extra 100 if Dunninger makes a mistake in reading it. Now, here's the address. Rinso, NBC, New York City. Don't ask for predictions. Any simple, amusing stunt that can be done in the studio is okay. The address is Rinso, NBC, New York. Dunninger's show will be a thoroughly enjoyable half hour with Mitchell Meyer airs and his orchestra and songs by beautiful Marilyn Day. So tune in at this same time next week. us next fall when the makers of Rinso will again present the Amos and Andy show. And now on behalf of our stars and their cast, this is Harlow Wilcox saying goodbye to all of you from all of us. See you next fall. Meantime, don't miss the Dunninger show next Friday night at this same time. The Amos and Andy show is broadcast to our fighting men all over the world through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Ladies, with one of the main sources of fats and oils still in the hands of the Japanese, the government is depending more and more on the fats you can salvage right in your own kitchen. Your job is important, so don't fall down on it. Save every drop of used fats and oils. Your butcher will give you cash plus two red ration points for every pound you turn in. Now, if you live in a small community or rural area where your regular meat dealer may not accept used fats, call your county agent or home demonstration agent. Save used fats every drop, every day. <laughs> Swan is the soap for everybody in the family. Just listen. Swan is pure as fine Castile. See how smooth your hands will feel. They be my for everything. Swan's the soap that makes us sing. Swan is baby mild for baby, mother, and dad. Swan is sudsy for dishes and light laundry. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company.